Can your scoliosis be causing your hip pain? When patients start experiencing symptoms as a result of their scoliosis, it can affect many different parts of the body. And we know that because scoliosis affects the entire spinal cord and nerve system. And once you affect the spinal cord and nerve system with something we call the central nerve system, the effects can be very widespread. It can affect different organs, different systems, and different areas of the body more than just your spine. And when we look at the most common symptoms associated with scoliosis, we know every case is very different, but it tends to be guided by really the severity of the case, where it's located, their age, and of course, the overall health of the body, meaning the more the healthier you tend to be, the less likely the scoliosis tends to affect you. But unfortunately, as curves progress, even healthy people, meaning that they don't have any other thing other than scoliosis, can start being affected as a result of it. The most common symptom is pain, for sure. It starts causing pain problems. And the pain can be associated, of course, in the spine, it can be in the neck, it can be in the mid-back, it can be in the low back. But one thing we don't expect is that we don't expect adolescents to have pain as a result of scoliosis. We expect it to happen more in the adult form. As patients progress in the adult stage, they tend to experience pain as a result of it, even though their curve is more likely progressing slower and not as rapidly. And it's kind of interesting because most people associate that the bigger the curve you have, the more pain you're going to have, and, uh, and and that has nothing to do with really how old you are. And that's not unfortunately true. We do know in a given case that the bigger the curve becomes, the more likely it is to cause problems. But from case to case, it's not related, meaning I could have a child with a 100 degree curve and have no pain and have an adult with a 30 degree curve and have severe pain. And maybe because their curve progressed 10 degrees as an adult and that 10 degrees of progression in an adult is painful where the 100 degrees progression as an adolescent or a child is not. And the reason why is because when a child is, is progressing, they're progressing because they're growing. And when they're growing, they're elongating. And this is not compressing any of the tissues or any of the nerves or anything that we talked about earlier. However, when you're progressing as an adult, you're progressing due to gravity over time. This gravity over time is compressive to the body, which can always, almost always will lead to pain eventually. So when we see this type of shifting occurring, we expect pain symptoms mostly to be associated in the adult stage. However, it's not completely impossible for children to be experiencing pain as a result of scoliosis, but normally it's just not as severe. When we see scoliosis, the big thing that it starts to affect is posture. It creates asymmetrical posture. It creates your torso and your pelvis not to be aligned, and it creates your head not to be perfectly aligned with your torso. And this alignment problem creates a lot of issues, just like it would with anything else that's something else that's bearing weight. Your spine is a weight-bearing object, meaning it's dealing with the effects of gravity, and the forces of gravity are traveling through your spine, into your hips, down into your legs, knees, and feet. So therefore, anytime you shift the center of balance, you're gonna affect everything below it. And it's just a matter of time that when this shifting occurs, it's gonna to lead to uneven forces down into the body, and these uneven forces will cause problems to occur into your lower extremity. In fact, the most common area that people tend to experience problems outside of the spine tend to be hips, knees, and feet. It's just like an unaligned car, that when a car is not aligned properly, it's going to affect one tire faster than the other. When your body's not aligned properly, it's going to affect one hip, one knee, one leg faster than the other. And this is just a degenerative process. Also, when the posture shifts out of the alignment, we know it can affect nerves and it can lead to nerve pain that goes down into your hips and goes down into your legs and knees. So you can have nerve pain going down into your hips or you can have asymmetrical pressure causing some of this uh, hip pain as well. This can happen not only because of the muscles firing through the system, meaning the way the muscles attach from the pelvis to the lumbar spine, but it can also happen because of degeneration, meaning the un misalignment can lead to premature hip degeneration, knee degeneration, and foot degeneration, whatever side you're shifting to. And what makes things even worse is that when it starts shifting and you start feeling pain, normally you don't want to stand on that leg, so you start trying to shift away. And normally your shifting away causes you to bend further into the curvature and can actually cause the curve to even progress more. 
So one of the quickest things that you want to do is you want to start trying to realign your spine or keep your posture as aligned as properly, meaning weight bearing, head over shoulder, shoulders over torso, torso over pelvis, pelvis over knees and feet, as aligned as possible. The more centered and the more aligned you are, the less likely that this problem will occur and lead to hip degeneration, knee degeneration, and foot degeneration, which can lead to surgeries. I mean, people have hip replacements, knee replacements, and it could be completely as a result of the uneven force that are traveling through the spine into the lower extremity. So you don't only want to treat the pain, you want to reduce the structure behind it. That's really what I'm going at here, is if you don't deal with the structural issues and get everything realigned, you're persistent. Your hip pain, your knee pain, your lower leg pain, lower extremity pain is going to persist over time. And no matter how much you numb it or deal with it in terms of uh, dealing with the symptoms, but not necessarily the cause, it's going to progress. And as it progresses, it's going to lead to more severe and more invasive treatments. So here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we actually address the structure. By getting everything realigned as close back to normal as possible, we can slow down the degeneration process, if not stop it, and definitely allow the body to start to heal and function and stop the, progress and, uh, the progressive process to continue to occur in the adult stage. So that's what we would recommend is that you get your spine evaluated to see if they can be improved and you can actually correct the cause of the problem. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.